Hello there and welcome to today's tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to take a negative uh, 35 mil piece of film and then scan it into your computer and then use Photoshop to basically develop the picture digitally. There's a few things you're going to need, obviously a scanner, some good negatives of some photographs that you'd have taken on a film camera and also a computer, obviously. So let's begin. So if we take the negatives out of the casing here and obviously you're better off not using your fingers but that's okay because there's going to be some touching up we're going to do in Photoshop if you don't have say a set of quite delicate tweezers or something like that and if you just hold them up to the light there you can get an idea of which picture it is that you might want to work with so with this scanner there's a white backdrop there that we can basically line up the piece of film with if you don't happen to have that then you can use a white piece of card but for this obviously that's not a problem Okay, now that we have our images ready to be scanned, we need to bring them into the computer. Now, I'm running off of Apple Mac's Lion operating system, and I can use Preview software to bring my images in. Obviously, this part of the tutorial, you're going to have to work it depending on what scanner you've got, what software you've got to bring the, the negatives in with. So I just have to go to File, Import from Scanner, and just select the Epsom printer. And there you can hear it doing an overview scan. Now the settings that you get with the general sort of scanning uh, software are mostly going to be correct. What you need to make sure of is that the scanning software isn't going to try and do anything to your image in terms of correcting it or trying to fix it because that will just take away your ability to edit the image. The most important thing is that you set your resolution high. It could come at standard 72 or something like that you want it nice and big because obviously these negatives are very small so you want as much playroom as possible and for me I'm going with 2400 dpi the only other thing is if you're working with one negative in particular if you have the option to use custom sizes for the software to focus on when scanning you're going to save yourself a lot of time because 2400 dpi resolution on an A4 size surface is going to take a long time and that's it, so I'm just going to hit scan. Okay, so now that we have our image scanned, we can just right click on it and go open with into Photoshop CS5. Now there's going to be other photo editing software that you can use to create this effect, to process this image. And also scanning software itself often comes with the option to work with negatives to automatically fix it for you. But we want to have control over what we're doing with the colors of this image and how we're going to work with it. So we're going to do it in Photoshop. So select the polyagonal tool and just create your own custom marquee around the frame of this image because the first thing we notice here is that it's slightly off center and we just want to straighten that out. Okay, now if I'm just going to pull down the ruler here just so I can tell where the straight edge is. If you can't see the ruler option then just go to view and make sure rulers is ticked. Okay now I'm just going to edit and free transform. And If I just hover around a the corner there I can just drag until it's perfectly lined up with this ruler. And That's looking pretty lined up there. And I'm just going to hit enter now I'm just going to go to select and deselect and the next thing we want to do is punch in on that part of the image and create that as the canvas so I'm just going to crop it down there and hit enter now the other quite obvious problem with this image is that well it doesn't look great does it and it needs to be inverted so that we can actually start to see the image as, as it would be when it was being processed traditionally so if we just go to image and adjustments and well click invert then although in a way that has kind of washed the image out completely because we're looking at the correct colors here the actual color balance is incorrect so as long as the photo is taken correctly then this is actually perfectly exposed it's just that we need to bring certain colors down we need to bring certain colors up and as you can see the blue in particular is really standing out here so that's what we need to do first so if you just go to image and adjustments and levels rather than just working with the red green blue channel as one 
we're going to actually work with each individual color channel. So we're going to start with red. Now, for now, all we want to do is take the highlight pointer and the shadow pointer and bring it right to the edge of this histogram and start to work with them within the regions of where they are in this actual photograph. And as you can see, it's already starting to make things clearer. We're going to do that with the green one now. And again, that's having a big difference. And now all that's left is that really over-the-top blue. And actually, it's quite a blue image, so let's just bring those down again. It's mostly in the shadowing, as you can see. And although that's still looking a little washed out, the color balance is a lot more even now. And what we can use is the RGB channel, just all of them together, to make final tweaks, mainly in the midtones here. And really what we're wanting to do is just add some more contrast to this image. And now I'm just going to go back and tweak those other colour channels until I'm happy with the overall balance. Now as we start to bring the image out you might notice the amount of imperfections all over the negative, the dust and scratches. Uh, the grain is actually a part of the photograph but the, the, the dust, we can do something about that. And it is hard to keep negatives clean but what we can do is use the healing brush to basically get rid of those little imperfections. The great thing about the healing brush is it gives you a lot of options uh, as to how you want to work with it and in this case we're going to want to bring the hardness right down and as you can see what I'm doing there is I'm holding down the command key clicking an area that I want to use as a reference to edit the affected area let go of the command key and just click and drag a little if I need to and what I'm just going to do is whiz through all of this with some very small little dragging motions over the little pieces that have been affected until the whole image is in a much better state than it is. So we're basically looking at a finished image here. What you might want to do is just try and sharpen it up a little, if that's necessary. Just over filter, sharpen and sharpen. And you can do that a few times if you like. Just be careful not to overdo it, because it will start to kind of slowly destroy the image as well. And once you're happy, we just go and file and save. And now if we just compare our two images, compared to the negative, we've come a long way. So get your old negatives out, get your new negatives out if you're still shooting on film. Scan them, get them processed yourself, have complete control over what you want to do with them. Because whoever said that film in photography is dead obviously didn't watch this tutorial. Thank you very much.